why there's a lot of men's books out there, right? So why did you feel called to write one? And why is it, why, why is your perspective on it so intriguing with what you've previously written about and what you might be able to help people with? Because, you know, your story is pretty interesting too. And I wonder if, yeah, maybe you can dive into like, why, why did you feel called to write this? And why would it be different than any other one that's out that, you know, out there at the moment? Because, because I zeroed out myself. And so um, a lot of help books and all that stuff, they're good, but they're, they're not catered for like people like us. They're like, it's almost like, like very rarely do I read a book that is going to be as raw. Like for me, like this book I'll give. So one of the things, it's not a book on how to like become rich or anything like that, because business is not my forte. Every time I've tried to do business, something has happened and I didn't, and this is what I talk about. I, I didn't have the mindset to succeed in spite of what happened. Like I was a realtor. I was working around like the number one, I shared offices with like the number one realtors in Los Angeles, right? They were out of West Hollywood at the time. Um, and so I had access to people who have reality shows because they're so fucking famous. I mean, I see celebrities in the elevator, uh, David Beckham's management offices in the same building. It was like, I was around the best of the best. And so I got to learn from the best of the best. And I was also in financial services being trained by people like, so like when I say realtors, I'm talking about like Frank Bruno, Brian Miyamoto. Um, uh, oh, I forgot that other guy, his name is, I think it's Ezra Cohen. I can't remember his last, uh, his last name. He's from Iran. They all had reality shows. They're all like top agents, top earners. And then in the financial services, I'm also around all these studs. Uh, you know, like one of my mentors was the former uh, CFO of General Electric. Uh, I got used to get trained by Patrick Bet David, who had, he runs uh, Value Tainment regularly. These people, I got I got to be around the most some of the most successful um, people in the world, and I was able to learn from them. But they had a mindset in business that most people will never get to. And you want to talk mental toughness? You, most people have not seen mental toughness till you're around a really successful person. And so I have that mental toughness. I just don't have it for business. I have it for art. I have it for like, I mean, for look at what I, I've been able to write. It's like every year is something else is happening in my life to like beat me down. And I'm like on the ground getting my, I'm like that guy who's in the fight getting his ass whooped, but like for some reason, nothing's been broken yet and I'm not knocked out. So I'm like still like getting in like a jab when I can, you know, like <laughs> that's me in life. And so I know what those qualities are like. I know which I don't have in certain uh, businesses, but then I do have it for other skill sets. And I'm able to share people my, with people my experience and all of it starts with taking 100% responsibility with yourself. Nothing's happening to you. So like when the crash of 2008 happened, I lost my sphere. Of, like I didn't have the sphere of influence to, to sustain that because of all the fees, right? When times are tough, everything kind of constricts. The people who already have stuff going, they've got a business model that's anti-fragile. They're going to make money whether the market skyrockets or whether the market crushes, like gets crushed. They are anti-fragile. So I have a whole chapter on anti-fragility and how you make yourself anti-fragile. And um, I have a whole chapter on mindset. I have a whole chapter on um, the best solution that anybody's going to do if you want to change your situation is you got to get a good physique because we're shallow. It's not that we're shallow, but human beings are, we're attracted to beauty. So the better you look, if, if you want to get in with the elites, you're already at a disadvantage because you're not in their families. So they look at you as inferior. The only way you get in outside of that is when you a, either A, build some really amazing business and show them that you're worthy of that, or B, you're so fucking attractive that they're, they're jealous. Like all their money in the world won't, won't ever buy how good looking you are. And that's the other, that's like why, that's why they gravitate towards all these young people and the stars and stuff. And then they try to bring them into the fold to serve their agendas. Um, because nobody would look at them and say, yeah, Klaus Schwab looks like a trustworthy guy. You know what I mean? Like, no, you need someone good looking. And right now it's getting played out because everybody's kind of like seeing how pathetic Hollywood's become, but in the eighties and nineties and shit, when times are good, 
all those celebrities were all being used to cultivate this gynocentric world order that lies to men and, and basically destroys masculinity. And it ties in with a lot of the work that Crow was doing and Jason was doing where everything starts in the 60s, not everything, but like you see how there's like this takeover from Tavistock and with the manufacturing of the Beatles and the sexual revolution and the introduction of birth control in 1965 and birth control cannot be filtered. The hormones from that can't be filtered from the, the, the treated sewage or whatever, the urine. So that water is gonna end up back in the water tables and it's gonna end up in the tap water. So now you have these people drinking tap water that not only has fluoride in it, but the hormones from the birth control. So if you're not using reverse osmosis and getting rid of all this shit, a lot of you are drinking that and you're getting estrogenics and all this stuff in hand soap and fucking soy, flax seeds, you name it. There's all the colored dyes, red, whatever, any type of dyes in your drinks and stuff. It's all contributing to your um, demasculation. And so you have, we live in a society right now that the men have not only been taught to behave like defective women, they've also had a physical component to the social engineering that's feminized them. And not only that, America has the highest rate of single mothers in the world. You're looking at 23% of women are single mothers and single mothers cannot raise men. It's, it's all the stats prove that a single father does a much better job raising an individual than a single mother does. But because of the way everything is and the way social media is, dating has now become brand management and women who seek attention get unlimited attention from social media. So they get their, they're, they're spoiled for choice, whether it's on dating apps or whatever, they got all these desperate men simping after them and trying to get with them. Right. And then it's the exact opposite for men. You as a man are pretty much not attract, 90% of men are both physically and economically unattractive to women, to 90% of women. So what you have is a very small group of men doing all the breeding and getting all the women because they got their shit dialed in. But this is also seen in the reproductive rates um, in America where you're looking at for every one guy that produces, reproduces children, five women reproduce. So even if the, you look at those stats, you're looking at only 20% of men getting 80% of the women. And that's a real fucking problem, especially with like birth rates declining and stuff. So right now, most men are unfuckable, uh, unattractive, disgusting, sloppy, whiny, complaining little bitches who aren't going to get what they want in life unless they turn it around. And I can help you do that. You get, you read that book, get mad or get realistic. You give that work six months of your life of actually doing the work and uh, you're going to transform your physique, but then you're going to transform your mind and learn to identify red flags and stop wasting your resources and time pursuing women or trying to get laid when you need to be working on yourself. Because once you start upgrading yourself, the women will be attracted to you anyway. 